Drew Armstrong. And in this presentation, I'm going to be talking to you about the future of CAD in the cloud. Let's start with some definitions. For some people, the cloud means the internet. Everything and all things pertaining to the internet are the cloud. But there's a more common view is the cloud acts as remote storage. A lot of us have used Dropbox and Google Drive to store our family photos. The general view of the cloud is a software as a service medium. This allows us to rent or use services and software that are contained on a server somewhere else via our web browser. In the CAD world, Onshape and Kadonix are two companies offering exclusively web browser-based CAD applications. Microsoft offers a web browser-based productivity suite, as does Google. There are other models of cloud, such as distributed processing. In this, you have a certain application that runs on your desktop PC, and some of the application runs on a server somewhere else. So Autodesk 360 allows you to model 3D images on your desktop and ray trace them using their powerful processors. Cloud can also mean whatever marketing wants it to be. The cloud is the magic that will make our lives immeasurably better. The reality is though for all of us that the cloud is essentially joined up computing. Once you take all these separate systems and allow them to talk together, they can work in useful and productive ways. So let's see who uses the cloud in the UK. This is data from a 2015 survey. 79% of organizations polled considered that the cloud was part of their IT strategy. I think if you asked the question three years ago, you'd be lucky to reach 20%. 61% of those customers run Windows Server 2003, support for which will be terminating this year. If you're running 16-bit applications, you're in trouble. Those will not be portable going forward. 47% reported that they had a significant adva competitive advantage using their cloud services. That means if they did not have those cloud services, they would feel they were worse off in their businesses. 50% of the organizations surveyed that did not have any cloud services at all anticipated adopting some cloud applications within the next 12 months. Larger private businesses show the highest rate of cloud adoption at 80%. However, SME organizations are at 75% cloud usage. That tells us that the difference between the small companies and the huge companies are not very much when they consider their cloud options. The benefits for the small companies are clearly the same benefits for those large companies. Only 2% of organizations using cloud services believe that they had experienced a breach. This suggests that concerns over security are unfounded. Consider, Google and Amazon spend billions and billions of dollars each year to ensure that their systems are robust against hackers, attackers, viruses, worms, and whatever else might happen. <clears throat> their billions of dollars spent protecting their business model. Only 2% of organizations using cloud services believe they had experienced a breach. In the past, companies would have been very apprehensive keeping their data on the cloud as they would fear that once it had left their building, it was out of their control. However, the converse is true. Google and Amazon spend billions of pounds maintaining those systems, far more than any um, individual organization can. By the end of 2015, 90% of UK businesses will be using at least one cloud service. This shows us that we are shifting to the cloud in the UK in a big way. So there are various pressures to migrate to the cloud. The clearest one is capital expenditure. Not having to buy servers and provide air conditioning and server racks is a great incentive. Also, people cost a lot of money in the UK and skilled people you need to maintain your infrastructure cost the most. From an administration cost, personnel is just one of them. You can reduce also those costs by not having to worry about security and all the antivirus software you need to install. Also, the software management. You don't have to go pay people to go from machine to machine, updating machines, making sure the servers and the client PCs are all at the same level. Technology providers themselves are pushing us onto it. We know that Microsoft is dropping support for a number of their server systems. 
Google and Amazon want you to use their services because they want to make a little bit of money every time you use their um, cloud packages. Adobe and Autodesk have already made investments and already have one foot in the cloud with their grid models. However, the most interesting thing is that Intel, ARM, AMD and the various CPU hardware manufacturers want you to use the cloud because people are no longer interested in buying desktop PCs. And those Android and mobile phones that they're using don't need high power CPUs that these companies once produced. So their main focus now is to increase the density of CPUs onto their silicon and sell them to the Googles and Amazons of this world. So they're making it very easy for companies to start server farms. In the past, we used to have bulk CAD workstation. You can see here they're using pen-driven touchscreen interfaces, not too dissimilar to what we're using now. All of these systems ran on mainframes and mini computers. And I think mini is a relative term here. In the 80s, you started seeing the uh, invent of computing devices such as mice on home microcomputers. <clears throat> By 1988, 16-bit computers such as Atari's, Amiga's and Apple's started hitting the scene and allowing people to do much more interesting things with graphics at home. Despite their best efforts, though, they're never going to match the attempts of Cray at the time. However, in the 90s, home PCs and the release of AutoCAD by Autodesk started to change the industry. These were now becoming the de facto software workstations to be used in industry. Then the internet happened, and now we're full circle. We're all back to mainframes again with our cloud-based, web browser-based software applications. Arcadia is one of these. So one conclusion from this, that software has always followed mainstream hardware trends. The money is going to server farms. The money is going to the mainframes of today uh, this will be opening up avenues for software and encouraging software companies to support those platforms. The cloud is here to stay. We know the benefits are numerous. Increased collaboration and control of your documents. You can work from anywhere. It's very scalable. You can add licenses and seats whenever you need, and they integrate nicely with other cloud packages. There's a reduced time to benefit. As soon as you hand over your credit card details, you can be working, and not just working in a blank environment, but an environment that's already configured for your needs, set up with your libraries and your data. The lower costs are having no department, IT department are clear. We've already discussed security. It's far better that Google manages your security than you do. If you're a small company, no longer do you have to outlay tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars for a package. You can start competing with the big guys. And also it's environmentally friendly. Now, you might not be in, interested from an environmental perspective. However, think of all that energy that you're no longer spending money on. Also, the increased integration to third party services and your customers and suppliers mean that the benefits for you also apply to them. So you'll be all encouraging each, each other to shift to the cloud. You are factoring in planned obsolescence and abandonware. Legacy software is likely to build be killed off sooner rather than later at a rate that we is unprecedented. There is far less incentive for vendors to keep their ex existing executable on the client models. They need to be on the cloud. They know they need to be on the cloud because they need access to your data passing through the cloud to make money off it. Interfacing their old systems, their non-cloud technology with their cloud technology is less optimal. It's a pain for them to do. All the new standards and frameworks that are being released from universities, open source and industry are all exclusively based on cloud computing. Nobody wants to design software on the old fashioned desktop models anymore. And in the future, it will be difficult for them to source software engineers. Just as difficult it is now to try to find a Fortran programmer. You also have to be aware that halfway offering such as the desktop application and grid hybrids such as the Creative Suite and Autodesk are probably also likely to be killed because companies who own the domain such as Google have native client. Now native client is a virtual machine that runs within a web browser. It's mathematically provably secure. It's totally cross-platform compatible with any system that can run Google Chrome or a Google operating system such as Android or Chrome OS. 
And then, as I mentioned earlier, it executes totally within a web browser. This means a software company who writes on this platform will only have to write that application once and it will run absolutely everywhere. This is already happening in the application world. When a company writes Angry Birds, it has to run on iOS, uh, Android, Chrome Web Browser, PC, Microsoft Xbox Live, Steam. A company doesn't sit and write that same application six times. It writes it once in one of these platforms and it will execute on all those. So the conclusion is, this is important for design engineers or any engineers now to be aware of these trends. Because if they can shift their data to a, into the cloud platform sooner than later, they'll reap the rewards now. So for one example, if you had a drawing system, you'd be able to output your technical publication data automatically. There no longer needs to be many steps between drawing something and releasing a tech pub's output. In fact, within vehicle diagnostics, you can allow virtually customers or field engineers direct access to the data that you created the drawings in in the first place. Once it's in the cloud, your data can be used, sorry, you can use other grid support analysis systems to do things, interesting things with that same data, such as simulation, finite element analysis, failure mode analysis, rendering, and a whole host of other things we can't even think of right now. You'll find it easier to connect to your customers. Your customers, you can share your data with your customers. You can collaborate. You can work together on things and reduce that cycle time. And those same things can happen between you and your suppliers. If you're designing a harness and you have a harness manufacturer on the phone who's got some issues because their machine uh, creates harnesses to, into a different specification, you can discuss that and change the drawings right there and then. And it's also going to become costlier for those software suppliers to manage their non-cloud versions. You'll start seeing this with less frequent updates from those legacy vendors. <clears throat> this in-browser software will become the norm and how that's important for your legacy vendors too, you need to consider if they spent many years developing their current non-cloud platform and everybody's shifting to the cloud, are they likely to spend another 10 years trying to shift their product to the cloud or are they more likely to just drop their entire division? How important is your business to them? You need to consider this when choosing your design tools. If you've got any questions, please email me at andrewa.cadonics.com and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Thank you.